B Bad and Brandon. Boys, welcome. Hello. One second. Holding. There we are. Fuck, that is a nice looking jumpy, bro. Yeah, I just got it in uh, as a sample. So, Ooh, is uh, that a, uh, a sign of something to come soon? Man, um, other than it's going to be summer and I don't know how many hoodies I need to be fucking making. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, we have uh, we've switched and started adding some other stuff to our own cut and sew stuff. So instead of just goat shorts and everyday joggers, we've got some new sweats and then we'll have our own hoodies that'll be our cut. Oh, yeah, wow. nice. That's yeah, nice. so exciting shit, I suppose. Yeah, bro. Man, I love all your merch. It's um, it's super fucking cool. The stuff you do with all the colors and shit. Thanks, man. It's um, it's been fun. I'm glad. Uh, you know, for a, a majority lifting audience, I'm glad enough people are willing to let us be weird and kind of have a fun time with it. Now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's enough tough guy bullshit out there, right? Like I'm, I'm good <laughs> on all that. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. 100%. Also, I'm Brandon, by the way. Hey, what's this? What's this? What's this? Iceland, what's this Iceland photo you got up in the corner? Mate, I think you know the guy who took the photo. Is this Runar? Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. a, god damn. So, it. like, uh, small world <laughs> friends with, I think, someone who also yeah, I've, knows I've got, um, I've, I've got one up as well. Yeah, no way. So, yeah, Runar's good friends yeah, yeah. with a dude called Kevin Butler. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. From um, Thy Art. Fuck, from uh, from Thy Art. Yeah. So I know Kevin as well. Small, yeah, small but, world, man. Small world. So he's my training partner. We've trained together for Jesus more years, Christ. More okay. years than I can think about. Probably ten it's or even, twelve years. <laughs> it's even weirder because I actually went to high school with Kevin. Yeah. Shit. It's the smallest world ever. Yeah. Fucking crazy. Dude, that's wild. Yeah, so man, he's a good mate, and um, he hooked us up with Runa, and we've had him on a couple of times, and um, that's actually my second print. I bought some of that volcano stuff he did. Yeah, man, the um, volcano stuff looks so gnarly. We're heading over there in August, and uh hope that thing's still going. Oh, fuck. fucking oath. Will you try and climb it like he did, if you can? Jesus, fuck no. I'm, I just want to see lava. <laughs> <laughs> pretty pretty simple guy man I just want to see some lava and i'll be like all right fucking cool i can go back over there now <laughs> just tick that big box off that's fucking sick so yeah just... exactly i've never seen lava no fuck it looks um hot <laughs> that's a good word for it <laughs> yeah his story is silly too i think he climbed that mountain for like eight hours or something all up and he took a bottle of water and a packet of gummy bears with him he doesn't well you know i have a lot of great things to say about runar and hasey both but i wouldn't say their survival intelligence is where i would put their <laughs> their best foot 100 yeah. percent. that's fucking great oh fucking god i like that they shoot from the hip i appreciate that <laughs> yeah. i think he's planning to climb the volcano was i'm gonna climb the volcano and get some photos and he packed yeah, I would imagine that's about as much print planning that went into it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think literally the next day it was closed. No one was allowed to go up there. So it was maybe dangerous Fuck. or something. <laughs> but who knows? Just too probably... dangerous now. <laughs> we should probably do the official intro. 100%. Uh, we'd like to welcome to the podcast, Matt Vincent. Welcome. Woo! There will be an applause. Howdy, there. gents. Yeah, massive crowd and audience sitting in front of us here. In this, that's um, good i appreciate that live thing mate and, and you, we, you gotta do... you gotta punch them in with the soundboard yeah oh we do have that we, we do have that but i'm still not trying to work out the buttons which one's the clap button <laughs> i assume you guys are spending a lot of uh hours working on figuring those buttons out yeah, yeah. <laughs> high priority i'm not game enough to do it during the podcast and it come out without outro yeah, yeah that'll be what comes yeah. in yeah and then we just wrap yeah. Mate, we like to. The well, only, that's it. <laughs> the only official part of, of this thing is we like to say 21 sounds, who you are and what you do, just for those who don't know you. So you've only you got 21 sounds you're allowed to use. So sounds means burps, farts, coughs. Or words. Or words as well, if you'd like to use words. Um, and then, yeah, what do you got for us? Brando counts them to keep it official. It's a loose 21. 
owner and creator of Hate Brain Goods, two times Highland Game World Champion. You're at 11. Uh, total knee replacement X enthusiast. <laughs> you got um, three words left, two words left. A party. A party. Yes. <laughs> yes. What a fucking. That's a pretty good one, bro. Yeah. 100%. Did you say total knee recomplacement? Yeah, yeah, I had a total knee uh, replacement done in April of 19. Damn, you look iRobot. Yeah, I'm trying to make friends with our future overlords before they <laughs> take over. That way I can put in a good word, try to find a job somewhere. Before Siri, <laughs> Siri starts telling your knee what to do instead of you, bro. Mm. Uh, it, it doesn't listen either way. <laughs> what does Siri just spoke to one it's, it's a stubborn fuck. <laughs> yeah. How is the knee, bro? Is it all good? I've been watching your Instagram. You know, man. And stuff. Uh, yeah, dude. Surprisingly. Look, I, I think good's relative, right? It's yep. really good compared to when it was really bad. Yep. Um, it's not as cool as my other knee, which yep. isn't fucked up. So, I mean. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, relatively speaking, I'm very happy with how it is because it's not totally fucked anymore and I can walk and run and do a number of things. I just yep. can't do some of the things I could before. Yep. That's cool. And how many things does it kind of like limit you from? What do you miss out on? Um, so like I've got some now hip issues and stuff as well on that side. And uh, I mean, the knee, as far as just range of motion really isn't getting much over, you know, probably a hundred degrees and then the hips limiting that even a little bit more. So you know, powerlifting and kind of main strength sports competing in that, my, my time's probably done there. Yep. yep. Um, which is, which is fine. Right. Yep. Um, so I'll, I'll find some other fun shit to do. Yeah. I, I think that's the one but, thing I enjoy watching your Instagram. It looks like you've just found a way to keep training. And like you said, you just have fun with what you're doing. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like there's a couple, you know, realities of way to look at things from going what I did as an athlete to kind of where I am now. And, like I, I got a chance to compete in a sport that I really loved with the Highland games for almost 10 years. And I mean, just pour the gas to it and go as hard as I wanted to and compete as often as I wanted to for almost 10 years. Wow. And it just was awesome and gave back. Hmm. And then I got hurt. And so hmm. like, it's cool that I ever got to do that. I don't need to keep chasing that ghost. Mm, yeah. And so since I, I got a chance during my athletic career to figure out strength numbers and how strong I can be and all those type of things that, you know, that itch is scratched. And, mm. you know, with that said, I mean, it may as well fucking be because it ain't going the other way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, man, it's time to move on. And, and as a performance guy, like I, I just want to see what else this machine's capable of doing. If I can now apply the same things that got me strong mm. to other stuff. Yep. Yep. So what, what other stuff are you, uh, I guess, looking into now? So the current challenge I'm, I'm training for is uh, I'm going to do a 30 K run in uh, Bryce Canyon, Utah, in a, like a trail in the desert, uh, super, super beautiful national park, uh, like red rock desert with all the crazy formations. Um, so I'll go do that at the end of the month. I've been training for it now for about the last, uh, 11 weeks. Wow. And how you feel? Yeah, it'll be fun, man. It's really crazy. Like I went from 11 weeks ago, essentially, like, I don't think I've run a nonstop mile probably since I was in grade school. Yeah. And so, I mean, why the hell would I? Uh, <laughs> so it was kind of interesting to figure out, like, can I actually get better at running with my hip and knee? This is a thing that I shouldn't be able to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, just taking it slow with kind of the intention of starting out with, yeah, I'll do five hours of walk, run this week, move as much as you want to. Yep. Like there's no expectations on it other than do the time. Hmm. And by the end of week eight, like I did a three hour run. <laughs> and, wow. and so, dude, you can get better at shit. You can, it just takes time. And then by week six, like things were very different again. And so it's really interesting as someone who's never done any type of endurance training to see what it feels like to have this type of gas tank. And like, yeah. I have more energy all day. I feel better long-term and 
what never what I never got from strength sports and competing is that was the lessons that come from just being uncomfortable for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. 30, 30 miles, 30 miles of running too, right? Not 30 Ks. Uh, 30 K. Oh, 30 K. No, no, 30 K. Yeah. yeah. It's 18 miles. Yeah. Damn. But through trails and stuff, that's a long, that's going to take a little bit. It's about, it's got about 4,000 feet of elevation. So. Wow. There's, a, there's plenty. It, of it'll be an ass kicker. It, it'll be an all day affair. I mean, like yeah. my, my goal is to not die. <laughs> Anything more positive than that, I'm very, yep. very happy with. Must be pretty enjoyable to do that kind of trail running out in the outdoors and stuff, though. Dude, it's it's really great. Uh, the outdoors thing is something that, yeah, I really guess I didn't get into until probably you know, five or six years ago with more camping and getting a chance to travel around a little bit more. And then once I built my truck up so that I could camp and do that type of stuff with it, I've really been into it. Um, yeah, I think one of the things I didn't realize I loved as much as I did about the Highland Games was that we competed outside. Yeah. And I wasn't stuck in a gym all day. Like I got to go throw and like yeah. I, I guess I, I just never realized how good that was for me. Yep. And so now that I'm getting a taste of it and I realize how much I benefit from it mentally and everything else, I'm gonna make time to go do it. Yep. Yeah. And so I may as well train for something in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. And then it's a bit of a small travel aspect to it as well. Getting to go to a yeah, exactly. and, yeah. and run somewhere else, which would be unreal. Yeah. I got two friends that are doing it as well with me. And then yeah. like my media crew will come. So we'll drive to RV out there and uh, Sweet. make a big swing of it. Yep. And then maybe a bit of a party afterwards. <laughs> there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there is the off chance that we will have a few days of a good time afterwards. <laughs> well, uh, absolutely well earned, bro. Oh, Mate, how did it, to start from the start, bro? How did you start lifting weights? What drew you to throwing some kilos around and then literally thinking about throwing it competitively into something like a highland? You know, so my brother, we, we were both athletes growing up, and uh, you know, him being five years ahead of me bit older brother seeing him have success in sports so as soon as he got to high school and actually started strength training i was immediately jealous waiting for the chance that i could get to be allowed yep. and so uh once i got to high school and was able to start training i really loved it because it made me better at the thing we were doing and yeah. i felt like my improvements for sport with which at that time is mostly football track and field yep that things got better um, I didn't realize until much later on that I don't like training for the sake of training. Like mm. I, I like getting better at shit. Yeah. And so that's a, that's a different monster. Yep. Mm. Yep. Um, and so like once, and that's how I've always trained. And so after that, it was into college for track and field. And so yep. everything was still performance based training, um, you know, explosive lightweight stuff. And then a couple of years after, so I, Failed on lifting after college and then got into cycling a little bit and opened a bike shop. And then cycling as wow. that failed. Yep. That's yeah. Yeah. I, I like bikes. Yep. Uh, so I still but ride. Full locker, the whole and, kit. Uh, oh, absolutely. If you're going to do it, there's no reason to halfway. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to, if you're going to fucking show up and look like a kook, you may as well go full in. <laughs> Did you say you opened a bike shop as well? Yeah, yeah. So that was my first shot at entrepreneurship after uh, yeah, wow. after college. Was I opened a bicycle shop in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with a partner, and uh, it didn't do well. <laughs> After your first one, <laughs> damn. <laughs> yeah, live and learn. I mean, what was the biggest problem with the bike shop? Most likely having twenty two year old me as a business partner. <laughs> probably fair. <laughs> probably a big big problem. He has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> and uh, is more excited about the idea that he's can say he's an entrepreneur than in any of the responsibilities of owning a business. Yeah. Turns uh, out you still got to do the so, business bit. <laughs> yeah, it helps. <laughs> and so after I got out of that and then back into uh, the normal working world for a while, I uh, got into strongman, got into powerlifting, did some weightlifting. And then um, once I kind of found the Highland Games, that was pretty much the focus. Yeah. Uh, just all the skills already just applied to it so well after throwing in college. Yep. Throw if you're a thrower in college and get into the Highland Games, it's like cheating. Yep. 
You've already so, got a big head start. <laughs> yeah, you already know how to do all the events, you know, yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, a, is there much and, Highland and so Games from there, on, around there? I just loved it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I could, we competed quite a bit, man. Um, I mean, I, I would compete probably 20 times a year, and some oh, of wow. those I'd get over to Scotland and go compete every year. But for the most part, there's, there's something damn near every weekend in the States uh, somewhere. Oh. You know, yeah. I fly everywhere to go compete every weekend, but the yep. games uh, usually pay prize money for the pro class, and they yep. fly us out as entertainers. Yeah, oh, sweet. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's a great gimmick. Yeah. Holy shit. I didn't so, realize it was yeah, that It's, a, big, it's the sweetest loophole Australia ever of strength much. sports. Yeah, I know that you guys do some games, though. Uh, yeah, we've got a – there's a comp coming up in a few weeks May, yeah. um, that a couple of our friends are doing. Um, at a little place, knew, uh, like Twitch. Jono, uh, Jono McFarland's a guy that throws down there. That could be that Kiwi. Could is he, he running it? I wouldn't have a no. It, yeah, big Terry. Because because one of our guys, one of our mates that we had on the podcast, he went and competed in uh, NZ for the. I'll probably butcher it. Horatio Horosh, starting with the H Games. Yeah. Anyway. Um, he won the he won, he won the Trans Tasman. Yeah, he won and he won it. <laughs> All right on. Yeah. Man, I always it. wanted to get down there. I've always wanted to get down there and I just haven't yet. I, I know Bonnie and I've talked about trying to come down and you know do some seminars or something like that. It's just kind of a matter of what works and yeah. makes it worth the, the travel. <clears throat> Are you guys allowed to travel? I assume. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe everywhere but here. Yeah, I feel we're like whether you're bit, uh, bit, I know that. Mean. I mean, we're headed to Iceland in August. Fuck, that's unreal. So, damn it. Yeah, we got a weird travel coming up, man. Uh, we go to Iceland in August. I mean, if things are open. Yep. Uh, I think I'll have to do the vaccine bit to go, yep. um, and then we go to Bali in October, and then I'm going to Africa in September. Oh wow. wow. Fuck. Yeah. What's so, in Africa? I got invited to go on a rafting trip on the Zambezi. Oh, bro. That's so sick. <laughs> right. It sounds like fucking pure adventure. I'm, I'm totally going. <laughs> As if you so, say no to that. <laughs> no, no shit, right? And so, like, that's what I'm interested in being in shape for. Yeah. Because, yep. like, all these really cool life experiences like that come with a fucking price, man. They're like, yep. yo, they're physically taxing. Yeah. Fucking I. <laughs> Yeah, you can't so, be good at doing Yeah, I, I'm curious. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, right? And fuck Bali, you're still you're close to us. You're not too. That's far what I away. understand. I'm, I've I've been doing some research here on Bali. I, I have to say, I'm. Uh, have you boys traveled to Bali? Been to Bali? I have not. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bali, good or not? Oh, it's good, bro. You'll have a good time there. Okay. You'll enjoy that. Okay. So, so here's. I was looking up price of living in Bali. It's cheap. And it's nothing. Yep. <laughs> and so essentially what I figured out is like a really nice villa, essentially with a staff. Yep. It's like 500,000 US. <laughs> yep. And, to buy and it. then the lifestyle, right, to buy it. And then the lifestyle to go with it essentially is like a hundred grand buys you a decade. Yeah. Yep. That's about living. Right. Yep. Real good living too. So essentially, if I sold my house and punched out of hate brand goods, I could probably pull that off. And probably, if I don't want to work anymore, we could. I could do that. Yeah, mate. And you could have a hell of an adventure in yeah, Bali. I was gonna fucking say you. Would and this be- is what I'm saying. So at least, all right. The mentality is, I don't have to work. Because I could yeah. just go move to Bali. <laughs> you could even run Hey Brand from probably from Bali as well, bro. It would be tricky. Yeah. It would get really tricky just from the the time difference of getting stuff to photograph it and shoot it oh, and then yeah. have it. But just because shipping stuff over there to get it shot would be a disaster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's and really I, the only hang up. Yep. But I one, reckon we could convince you. One, it doesn't seem too hard. Yeah. <laughs> And then you can come. I'm not hard us. to trick into things. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can get you to come visit us over this way, bro. Dude, I'd love to. I'd love yeah. to. I want to see as much of this fucking wild ass planet as possible. Hundred percent, bro. Is that one of the things you enjoyed with your your Highland Games, like being able to travel around a lot, bro? 
Absolutely. Like that, that was something I really liked when I was in college getting to travel around. And even then, like we're not getting to explore much. Yeah. Uh, but once, once I got, I mean, I, I was always kind of into it. So, I mean, once I traveled in college as track and field, then I did some road trips with a friend and then I did outside sales and traveled for a job. Yep. Yeah. I, I like going. Yeah. So the the Highland game scratched a bunch of cool itches and like, like also as a, like the level athlete that I am, I wasn't supposed to be able to go compete in Scotland and over in Iceland and be paid to do so. So like, man, I'm infinitely thankful for that life I got to live. Yeah. That's unreal. So you would, you'd always find yourself on down days trying to explore the local countryside or little towns that you're in as, as much as humanly possible. Yeah. That's so cool. Just trying to get lost in places. Like that was my favorite was the last couple of years that I competed. I'd go over to Scotland in the summers for, for games week is what it's called. And so you could compete a lot in a really yep. short amount of time. And so like I'd go over for, you know, 16 days and maybe compete 11 times. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a grind, but wow. it, it's a fucking experience, man. And it's one of those things that the U S guys tend to put off. And it's like, ah, I'll do it. I'll do it next year. Or I'll do it next year. And, you know, for me, man, I'm glad I did it in 2015 and 16 because that was it. Yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't something later in my career. I got the chance to say like, well, we'll go take that fun tour. Yep. Cause that, how does it work yeah. for that? Cause I think we had um, the boys touch on a little bit. You just go from town to town and, and compete as you, you move around. Is that right? Yeah. Essentially the whole deal in Scotland, it's, um, there's no invite so it's basically show up and throw oh wow and so it was you know there's there's four or five of us probably in scotland at the time whenever i was over there that are that are good yep you know we're gonna all be at the world championships which were later that month in yep. scotland and so some days there's you know three or four games happening oh wow and we'll all discuss so that we go to different places because <laughs> There's, there's money, money on the table where we're all going to fight for the same amount. Why don't we decide who's going where? Yep. And we'll see yep. each other tomorrow. <laughs> yep. So, you so know, you go here, you go here, you go yeah, here. It, <laughs> yeah. It, it, was, it was just such a different mindset being over there of just like, yeah, we're going to, to take all the money we can from these places. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was just a cool camaraderie with it too, because it does turn into a bit more of a job because we were throwing, you know, six days in a row. Yeah. You, you definitely go in with the mindset of, uh, I'll throw far enough today. Yep. You didn't throw any further than you needed to. That's exactly it. If you got the win, I'm not taking extra throws. Like, uh, yep. I got a big day tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> How did you find backing up day after day? You get, you get in shape. You, yep. you just get in throwing shape. And it, it's one of those things that it just gets there. You know, you want, your body finally goes like, oh, okay, so this is what we're fucking doing, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're just going to go and do this every day and be kind of cold and wet and not sleep good? Great. And then <laughs> it kind of just gets on board. And then at some point, it, it stops helping. It, yep. You know, at some point, it falls apart. But there, there's a good wave you can ride at least through it. And especially if you're a little smart and get, you know, uh, you know, finish up if we finish up a game and it actually happened to be hot, let's go find some water to get in, to get cold and try to recover and, you know, little yeah. tricks you can do on the road, anything you can. Mm. Yeah. Right. Did you ever rock up to any of those little tournaments like that? And then all of a sudden some outlier, some town giant just comes out of somewhere and you're like, Oh fuck, where did this guy come from? No, you, you'd, you'd see some mutants show up for a couple of things. Cause they would always do, uh, like local strongman stuff. But meanwhile, yeah. the throwing, it's so technical that you like no just real strong guy shows up and does well at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's uh, it was rare that any of that happened. We all know all the guys who were any good around yeah. the world. Like there's not any secrets. Yep, um, yep. Because once they show up, we at least know who they are. And then there's just not enough of us. So yep. no one's sneaking around. Yeah. Um, you'd see it sometimes in the strongman stuff though. Just some, some guy would, some goon would show up and just not understand stuff was supposed to be hard to be picked up type of <laughs> type of guy. Like he's just walking by the strongman equipment or stones and just like, and just sets them down and we're like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Meanwhile, he doesn't know, like it's supposed to be heavy. Like, I saw some, I saw some guy do that with a Thomas inch dumbbell. Fuck. Like, 
Fuck. He was just in the corner of the gym, and like I was just watching him kind of look at it, yep. talking to someone, and he just goes over and like grabs it and picks it up and sets it down, <laughs> and then like picks it up again and sets it down. And then, like, picks it up and puts it on his shoulder and sets it down. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you're not supposed to be able to do any of those things. <laughs> like, oh, you just, just didn't know. You know, there, there's something to it. And so uh, there's, there are just those mutants out there, man. There are some fucking mutants out there. What was your favorite like event? Francis Ngano, right? Like, like oh, what yeah, a mutant bro. that guy is. Mate, I would not want to stand up across in him. A sand mine? Yeah. No fucking way would I want anything to do with a confrontation with that. Yeah, I watched some of his Joe Rogan interview and he just talked about being a kid, just shoveling sand and just working fucking hard. <laughs> Dude. Dude, what a what a story though. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible, isn't it? What a crazy story, man. And man, of of all the different, you know, opportunities there are for life experiences and how variety everyone's story is different, his yep. is wild. Yeah fucking absolutely oh, man well, yeah i not- have not uh my starting position in life to where i currently am is not as different <laughs> as, oh. uh, as his <laughs> his could not be yeah it's literally worlds apart isn't it yeah anything's possible that's yeah. that's what his story proves yeah 100 percent. i don't i think one thing i know yeah, for maybe sure, not I probable but him. <laughs> no fucking way <laughs> i'd rather be shot yeah, I'd rather it, be shot. It would hurt less <laughs> and be quicker for a, for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Like, no <laughs> way, man. That guy's such a terrifying monster. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weapon. What was your favorite he's event? A, he's back a terrifying day, monster who kills other guys that are terrifying monsters. Yeah, that's the scary bit, isn't it? <laughs> right. <laughs> but I guess yeah. What would he have to be scared of? He wouldn't be scared. He's had. He knows what hard is. Yeah, yeah, there isn't anyone else. Yep. Fuck. Until the next one comes through. And then it's like, fuck how much scary well, yeah, it, the next guy. It's like the outliers. It, it's outliers like like someone like Hapthor or Brian Shaw, right? Like, yeah. You know, they don't make bigger people. That's <laughs> no. it. And those are the two biggest guys created. Mm. No. And like, maybe you could argue Shaq. Yep. But... Uh, they just 450 pounds, 460 pounds at one point and like still athletic. Like, no, that's yep. anytime someone ever says, Oh, I know a big guy. Yep. I just kind of want to respond with, I know the biggest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you don't know a bigger guy than I do. Yeah. That's lovely. <laughs> you know them. That's very cute. My guy's way bigger. <laughs> dude, they're the best. Yeah. They're the fucking best dudes. The Icelandic guys have always been my favorite man I've, I've gone over there like once a year since probably 2009 oh wow yeah what so this, like training this year in august would be my 12th or ter- they're the best like it's yep. intense yep but none of the gyms over there ever felt like it had that weird scarcity mindset that i run into places here where people get like weirdly competitive and fucking yep insecure in the gym with even training partners it just felt like such a tight-knit family that yep. everyone was rooting because anyone's success was important yeah that's so sick that's pretty cool like they were thinking bigger than just themselves individually for sure and they're and they're they're just such a proud group of their country and their country is into strength and yep. it's it's just got a good vibe over there being around it. Yeah. Mm. Did you do, when you've been in Iceland, have you done the tour around to see and lift all the different stones around the countryside? I've done a number of them. Yeah. Um, I've done uh, the, the fisherman stones in Dritvik. I've done the Husafell stone. Yeah. I've done, uh, there's this big gnarly, like tall one in the West fjords. Um, near Lotterberg that it's like 600 plus pounds. I've done oh, that one. Fuck. Um, the Judas stone. It's it's a weird one though, but it's like really tall. It's like a plinth. Yep. And so, I mean, don't get me wrong. It super sucks. Yeah. But it's tall, so like you you're standing hugging it while it's on the ground. Oh wow. And so you kind of can get over it yep. to where it falls into your hands. And then just kind of arch back and, and you get it off the ground that way. 
I, I, there's a technique, right? It's not like you're just trying to pull this 600 pound fucking awful stone. thing out of the earth. <laughs> um, the Husafel stone's fucking awful. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm glad I've done cool it. I'm glad I did it when I did it, but that, those days are probably done. <laughs> yeah. But again, that's uh, one of those massive cool things you can tick off and be quite happy that you've done right. it. Right, 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 right. Not worry about not doing it again. Yeah, same with like um, Denny Stones or the Inver Stone in Scotland. Like, um, yep. I was really glad that I, I did all those, or, or at least was interested in it whenever I was over there doing things. Yep. that's unreal, bro. See, I know it's it's changed a lot. Like, I think they they keep the the Denny Stones kind of under key now since they've become a bit more popular. Oh, really? So back in the day, yeah. anyone could rock up <clears> and have a crack at them. Yeah, there's just they're just sitting there. Oh wow. <clears throat> That's fucking cool, same man. with the Husabel stone in Iceland. It's just out in the field. Yeah, well, pro- probably because no normal people can actually just pick it up and move it. So it's pretty I safe. Would, I would assume that's why it's, <laughs> why it's there. Man, I, I, I went and watched Iceland's Strongest Man one year. And uh, they had used the actual stone during the competition. So it's one of the few times like they actually take it away from Husabel where it is. Wow. And so I knew the next day me and a buddy were heading out there. And so I was talking to the guy who had put on the meat about you know what time would they have it back so i didn't want to show up early and it wasn't trying to rush them or anything just yep. have information and uh, and he's like well if you want you can just take it i felt so uncomfortable with the idea that this thing would be under my watch <laughs> oh, fuck. No, pressure, like, bro. Uh, no thank you <laughs> this legendary thing is not nothing's happening to it on matt vincent's watch in history i promise that so imagine if you, you were know, the guy that broke it out there in the field <laughs> no way <laughs> no way there's no way they let me back in the country i assume you put it in the wrong field some you don't remember who that field was yeah, it's in a wrong field <laughs> just lose it yeah i just put it out there uh, it's like i don't know where it is <laughs> i could not handle that pressure they pick a field. they are <laughs> yeah just uh, take this what, stone like, i think i think part of it because it's an island with only three hundred thousand people on it like there's no anonymity mm. yep you, you, you can't hide yeah, hundreds. When we had Runa on the podcast just two weeks ago, we um we had the hot tip to ask him about leaving babies outside because uh, when they have yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. kids, they just leave them outside in the tr- in the strollers just right. to get some sun. Well, they don't. They also don't. The shops are small, so they don't yep. let them totally sell it as yep healthy idea of outside for the baby. They also are inconvenient to push a stroller around the store. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just leave it at the front. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little. They can sit out there. All the kids look the same anyway. Just pick one and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he talks about he had some visiting coaches from somewhere out of town, and they just come running into the gym, and they're like, "Bro, these kids are outside. They're in the stroller. They can't be there." Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, I'm trying to train. <laughs> they're noisy." <laughs> right. Well, I need them in here for. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always liked their sensibility, man. The Icelandic guys are good. Are, are great people oh fuck it, it's unreal bro so what about you guys what got what got you guys into this man the idea of the podcasting was a simple one we spend our days and lives with so many interesting people just through mm. like private coaching. coaching it was like let's tell their stories and then right on. One, once we kind of you know we talked to our, our immediate client base it was then all right well who do our clients know who have interesting stories and I'm of the belief everybody has an interesting story, regardless of 100%. what it is. And let's find out what they tell. You would hope so. Yes. There's some people I mean, you talk to, you like, no, oh, okay, that is your life. But then yeah. you get the, like, we've no. had some incredible. There's got to be some people, like some people for sure that I grew up with that never left the hometown, like never traveled. Yeah. yeah. But there's even something there, right? Like, mm. why? Yeah, yeah. What was the reason why? Yeah, I mean, but a lot of times that. you want there to be something behind that, but there just isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know, we've had like a massive mix of, and this is episode 100 and lost count. 125, I think. Yeah, everything. Oh, right on, boys. Which is cool. Which my, is sick. What, one of my long-term oldest clients, he's like 67 and he's done everything from gymnastics at a state level to running pubs in a, a shady area of to Sydney, rolling with the triads, to rolling with the triads, to having to yeah. leave, to go live it's in like Fiji sick. for a little bit because he wasn't allowed in Australia for a little bit, and then 
fucking came back and opened some sandwich shops and now he's a TAFE teacher. Boy, boys, I got an important question for you. I have an important answer. <laughs> There's some guy, Australian guy, got popular on YouTube a while back. Big lifter, like Sharky something. Yeah. And he's basically was like living in, in, uh, in Thailand now. Yeah. But like big steroid pusher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, and like I, I, always Sharky. just had these girls around like Sharky. He was a bikey. Dude. Like his yeah. story is nuts. Sharky's a bikey. Is he? Yeah. I know the guy you're thinking What does of. that mean? Um, like what, what is- Hell, Hell's Angel, Banditos. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pre- that'd be the Sharky, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. I just love how, like, covered in tattoos, that's and, like, yeah, big yeah. old Jack dude, always in like Muay Thai shorts, but like yep. some stringer tank top and like yep. work boots. Yep, <laughs> yeah, yep. that's him. That's Man, what a fucking interesting guy that is. Yeah, dude, he he, he got the name Sharky because he was a loan shark on the Gold Coast. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, the Gold Coast was a bit of a crazy lifestyle place. So I imagine he was loaning money to the wrong people, to, to the wrong or the, the right people and probably had interesting. It depends on how you look at it. Exactly. Interesting methods as of a loan like, shark, earning the money. <laughs> well, as a loan shark, I mean, you don't really want them to pay you back. I, well, no, you want less of a hassle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Ideally, they pay you back. That's, that's easier. So they you have like to be really nuts. shitty to people who don't. Yeah, just maybe like an extra twenty to hundred percent comes back with that with that extra bit that they pay you back. I definitely collected for a loan shark a little bit when I worked in the strip club industry. Like uh, one of our owners would lend money and had a couple of us go knock on doors to get get money back for him. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, wow. did that a few times. <laughs> Like it wasn't like something I spent a year at or anything. It was just a few times that the boss would come in and tell us a couple guys bouncing, like, hey, I need you to go to this guy's house. He owes me 15 grand. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) So you and a couple of lads would knock on the door and um would they find the money quickly? Either that or we'd take their car. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I fucking love it. There's always like there's always that other side to strength sports. Yeah. It's fucking great. Oh, look, if you if you haven't bounced in a bar at some fucking point or been paid to just be heavy and stand in a corner, like you're not you're not a real meathead. Like that's <laughs> that's fucking part of the bill. Oh, I fucking yeah, love it. that mate who asked you for that favor to go and do that thing for you. Just because you're the big lad. <laughs> How long did you work in a street? Oh, yeah, yeah, pool, yeah. Bro? We're moving. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Uh, that one sucks. I'm never available that day. How long did I work in a strip club? Um, yeah. I worked in a strip club twice. The first time I made it about six months. Yeah. The second time I worked there for about three and a half years. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Big change up. Bouncing? Yeah, bouncing, DJing. Yep. Uh, DJ. Whatever. Yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. Ran, ran microphone. Yep. Real talent. <laughs> Draft did, you, did you have a DJ name? No, 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 no. The, like all I'm basically doing is yelling for Cinnamon to get up on stage two and say <laughs> Alexis is coming on stage one and gonna have less clothes on this song. So get out and tip her. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to do it. You just have to do it in that strip club voice. <laughs> well, can you give us your best strip club voice? Oh, God, um, we got Alexis on two. She's gonna be up. Put your hands together a little bit less on this round. And on number one, we're gonna have Cinnamon. Make your way to the stage and tip these ladies. They're working hard for your money. Oh, yeah. I would give many dollar bills for that. Yeah. What was oh, your man. favorite stripper name you ever came across, bro? Oh, um, Sunshine. I had a girl named Sunshine that danced at the club I was at, and she was a complete lunatic. <laughs> and so she's always, always been my favorite, was Sunshine. She's a complete maniac. Like, um, for some reason, like believe a bunch of us were working for the CIA, like full conspiracy theory, oh, wow. probably schizophrenic. Yep. A uh, lot going on, but super nice. Yep. Um, <laughs> but like I had to throw a guy out of the club one night because she said he'd thrown a spirit at her, like a oh. ball of energy. And 
the way strip clubs work is the girls, whatever the girls say goes. So like I had to go ask an adult male to leave because apparently he allegedly threw a spirit at this girl. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Apologizing. Like, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> That's a fucking awkward conversation. You're on the way out. Uh, yeah. No more spirit throwing, please. No, please refrain. Did you have to catch the spirit uh, afterwards also, or was it all good? Um, no, she also believed I was undercover working for oh, Dwight Eisenhower, our president from World War II. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. <laughs> What yeah, was complicated movie? girl. Every yeah. uh, you know, every couple months, she would check herself into some mental health facility and get sorted <laughs> out, and then come to work and slowly fade back toward that. <laughs> Holy fucking hell! Fuck. It's I, look. I, just it, I didn't work at a nice strip club. Back. <laughs> yeah, the the place I worked at wasn't nice. <laughs> it wasn't the most reputable strip club. <laughs> no, and so. Look, including myself, no one was working in this place because they had been making a long list of good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. It's a it's a special environment. Oh fuck! Can't say I've ever worked in a strip club, but have visited a few. Yeah, I may have. Yeah, I may have been in one. May of over the the years of just um, May. May may have is seen. That- one or two. Well, I always I still like them. I found strip clubs to be amazing because they were always open late, later than anywhere else. You never had to really sure. line up for drinks because girls that were naked would get them for you. Mm. Also and true. there was naked girls. With <laughs> you have the exact same logic I do of why I didn't. Why once I had started working in a strip club, I never could comprehend why I would ever work in a regular bar again. <laughs> the regular bar has. The ratio of dudes to chicks is awful. Uh, even even as someone just being in the environment, I would still rather there just be less people there. Yep. <laughs> Ideally, bouncing, I don't want to just be nuts to butts throwing away beer bottles all night. I'd like to just stand in the corner and not do shit. Uh, I'm, I'm not here out of ambition. I'm just trying to make it through. And so... Yeah, once I once I started working in that environment, like no way was I ever going back. I mean, plus there were boobs in the room. <laughs> it's fucking. That's better than in a fucking general nightclub. That's fucking. Neat. They it's weren't so good ones. <laughs> there weren't good ones, but there they were a plenty. Boobs are boobs, bro. <laughs> yeah, it, it, to some point, you definitely you definitely realize you get totally numb to it. <laughs> you can sit and eat fast food next to a girl without her top on and not ever fucking think twice about it. <laughs> Oh fuck! That's Love it. unreal, bro. Mate, at what point did you manage to be able to say, "Hey, no more, no, no more, no more work," and just do what you're doing these days, bro? I mean, not that this isn't work, but do stuff for yourself. No, no, for sure, it's it, it's work. It's just not a job. Yeah. Um. So I was still still had my regular career in the oil and gas industry uh, until March of 2017, and they decided to let me go. Yep. Hmm. Uh, and I just never went for another job. Yep. Oh, um, so realistically, if I if I didn't milk that job as long as I could and just take the sweet paycheck until they would decide to let me go, um, I, I didn't argue real hard when they decided. I was like, yep. that, that, that's about right. Yep. <laughs> um, um, probably, I probably should have quit six months early six months yep. earlier six to maybe a year earlier yep um but the income was too good the job was easy yep and i wasn't bad at it yep so you could just get by so, nice and crazy still training no problems right well i mean yeah they let me travel to compete they didn't mind that i was gone 10 weeks of the year oh fucking hell so I mean, like, right? Like, I'm not gonna quit. <laughs> you know, I'm, you're gonna have to tell me you're gonna stop sending me paychecks for me to stop doing this job. <laughs> and they eventually did, and rightfully yeah. so. <laughs> and and from that, you started everything you're doing now, or was it just like a process? Or I, yeah, I had started. Yeah. I started Hate Brand Goods in like 2014. In 2011, I had uh, wrote a book, Training Lab, and then had wrote another book for the Highland Games, and then. Uh, 
Strength Lab was the last book I wrote in 2014. And then the hate was something I talked about as a philosophy uh, in the book of like why I train or why I give a shit to improve. Mm. Um, and then eventually I had enough people asking for a shirt and we started that in October of uh, 2014. And uh, now we're here. Yeah. Wow. Do you still remember your first shirt? No. <laughs> oh yeah, man. We still sell it. Oh wow. It's one of the only ones we still have always carried. Yeah. That's, that's pretty sick. cool. Pretty cool to still have that. And where, where do you come yeah, up? Yeah, man, with it's, uh, it's been a trip. Where do you come um, up with your ideas for all your merch these days, right? You know, wherever you find inspiration, right? For me, yeah. it's been kind of a mixed bag of, uh, you know, a lot of travel, um, conversations, stuff like that with the podcast or audio books or movies I watch. I, I tend to get a lot of concept and art ideas and direction from from film. That tends to be my favorite form of media. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's been, it's, it's been fun. Uh, the well has continued to keep giving back. So I haven't run into, you know, a writer's block per se, but it, it's been cool too, to add and be able to grow the team now to the point where I can focus on just doing creative shit. Yeah. Cause that was going to be my next question is most of the creative design all coming out of your, your noggin there, bro. Or have you got a little, yeah, little yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty limited on my like digital art skills. Yep. Um, I'm pretty, pretty decent as far as drawing. I'm, I'm good enough sketching on pen and paper that I can for sure get my point across yep. what I'd like to have done very, very well. Yep. Um, and then I work with a graphic artist or two that do a very good job of translating my brain to, to what I would like it to look like. <laughs> and, um, I've kind of figured out that system and, and can run with it. And we, we move really fast. We make a lot of shit. hundred percent. That's fucking cool. Did man. you have to, was there a lot of learning in like, I guess the manufacturing process and, you know, working with different companies and stuff over the years, like to fine tune it to where it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah of course. Right. Like it's, it's always a learning process. I mean, just, you just start not having any fucking clue what you're doing. Yep. And the sooner you can just admit that it's, it's helpful. Yeah, it's just man. be like, yo, we don't have any fucking clue what we're doing. We'll just take the next step and yep. figure it out then. And that's really all it's been ever since. And, and I mean, the biggest thing is, is don't ever quit and try not to fuck up the same thing twice. Yep. That's probably good. And, uh, Learn from the first time you that, do it. That's it. It, narrow, it narrows the focus down on what's working. Yep. You know, so, you know, if something didn't sell and there, you feel like there was an obvious reason, like maybe we don't produce that anymore or, you know, if we had an idea or, or, you know, if we got something manufactured and it turned out shitty, then yeah, we, we have to learn. Yep. And so that's really been the process, but it, it's been fun to go from, you know, graphic t-shirts to now having more of a solid lifestyle brand with, you know, some staple goods like backpacks and, and other stuff like that. And finally getting to do more cut. And so it's, it's fun. It's, it scratches that creative itch. And I really, really like that. Yeah, that's sweet. So I, know, I was going to say, I know some of the horror stories I've heard from people working with merchandising stuff is like they put in the order, do the stuff, do everything, and then it comes back from the people that make it and it's wrong. And you're like, Oh, well, we make it. Oh, you guys make it all yourselves. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. So that's really what got everything started for me was um, I, I had no intention of making shirts in my, uh, I've got a buddy who has a warehouse who does some screen printing already and does fulfillment for a couple of other companies. And he basically was like, we could do a shirt. I can print it and then ship it to people as they buy it. And you don't have to do any of that part. Ooh. And so <laughs> haven't moved in seven years, man. That's fucking <laughs> sick. And so I've even, you know, I've bought into the, to the business there and now I've partnered with him on the screen printer. That's why. And so it, yeah. Adding, adding more shit under our roof to, to manage quality control, to be able to make moves faster, those types of things. Yeah, unreal. Man, I just want to jump back to something about you said in your book around your hate philosophy. Can yeah. You describe that for us. Yeah. Um, you know, the elevator pitch of it is essentially it's, you know, it's, it's self-motivation through a bit of, a bit of healthy self-loathing of just not tolerating your own bullshit, not being complacent, not willing to say good enough's okay. Mm. You know, just, be willing to get better. Just keep moving that needle, right? Like 
I think it's really easy to get complacent and tolerate your own bullshit of I deserve this or I need a rest or I'm, you know, I should be having this or I should have would have shit that you're not out there grinding for. And so, you know, the philosophy comes down to fucking hate yourself enough to do the work. Yeah. Like don't tolerate your shit. Like if this is important to you, fucking own it and make it important. See, if I it's like not, that. say it's not important to move on. Yeah. I like that. I love that because I actually had to get both. I had a conversation with one of our good friends who's been on the show and he's like elite level powerlifter here, super heavyweight, totals 1040, and he's like super critical of himself. And it and it sounds like it comes back to that. It's like just don't tolerate what's good enough and always mm. stretch yourself for more. Right. And I mean, I think people can get a little lost in the shuffle, right? Like you can, I'm 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 not so progress driven that i'm not happy in the moment Mm. like i'm super stoked and thankful that i am where i am but what i'm concerned about is doing what's the most kick-ass things i can now to help me five years from now Mm -hmm. because i want that guy to be doing really rad shit fuck yeah and so like that's who i feel accountable to is is what can i be doing in five years if i'm if i if i fucking just pour the gas to it now I think that's also a good mentality because that person you are in five years is going to be different again to the person in 10 years. So it constantly pushes that needle and thread further and further away. So you're constantly chasing something to be better. But I honestly, you know, going tying it back to a conversation we had before about people who never leave their hometown. Mm. It's like, not everyone is like that. And it's that top echelon, that elite that just seem to keep pushing. Yeah. And and for me, like what I want is I I want people to do whatever the fuck it is they want to do. A hundred percent. Period. The the other side of that is you don't get to impede someone else ever doing what the fuck they want to. So if, if you're stoked and super happy doing the small town thing and never leaving and just super comfortable, then I don't have any questions about your life. hundred percent. If you're stoked into it but you don't get to piss and moan and not do anything. Yeah. If that, you don't get both. Yeah. If, if that's your life and you're happy with it, don't whinge that you don't have something that someone else has. Right. Yeah. Or if, if you're whinging and not willing to do anything about it, just fucking be honest with yourself and say, you don't care. Mm. Quit pretending you do, because if you did care, you'd do something. hundred percent. I mean, that's how it works. And so, yeah, just not tolerating that bullshit of, good enough mm. fucking you know, or your own bullshit of someone else's success somehow is impending yours mm. yeah. you know that scarcity mindset is such a such an exhausting thing to deal with you know I, I i can't say enough good things about you know when you end up having great relationships with rad people that all just want success for each other mm. Man, it's 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 rocket fuel on the group instead of those couple people you know you're always around that are just like <clears throat> like everything's always bad like man i don't fucking have time for you no i just really i really like how you call it the the the, the hate philosophy and like i think and it's my personal opinion that we're so caught up in this self-love self-care society that as you said before, like a little bit of self-loathing and self-criticalness is is okay. It's what makes us. Well, I think I think it's the good side of the ego, right? Like I kind of feel like there's two sides to the ego. One being, you know, this part of you that wants to win, that that wants to get better, that wants to be the best, that has all those type of competitive, self-driven things inside of you, and then you have the other side of the ego that gets really protective and is dealing with insecurities and if you can get rid of that guy and not be stressed out by someone else's success or what you know what something else says maybe about you when no one's concerned with your shit just worry about yourself um you get rid of that side of the ego and the other side's really really valuable 100 percent. if you can just keep laying into wanting to be uncomfortable to get better like, I think there's a big difference between self-love and self-complacency. Mm-hmm. 
I agree. But do you think that competitive side of our ego is is being told to be quieter now? Like in today's society? Oh, I do think it's being... I think people are trying to. 100%. Which is a fucking gigantic mistake, man. We're supposed to fuck things up and fail. 100%. Protecting people from failure is a huge mistake. People don't want to be uncomfortable anymore. People don't want to be uncomfortable, but even from like a, a, a child now, you know, in games where they're not keeping score... They never know what it's like to lose. And unfortunately, if you never know what it's like to lose, you'll never know what it's like to win. Right. And so it, I don't like that idea. I fucking uh, hate also, it. I fucking hate it. Also, I was someone who benefited wildly from it not being that way. Mm-hmm. Right. My personality and type played well with it, all those type of things. So it's easy for me to sit here and say, this is the path and it's important. Meanwhile, I'm already yeah. that type of person. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not like I ever remember choosing to play sports. I was just playing sports Mm -hmm. and I don't ever remember being bad at them. And I don't remember, you know, not getting picked or being forced to play or do any of that type of shit. So I, I know that, like, I think that is protecting kids from parents that don't listen to what their kids want more than just a parent maybe being able to say that you know, we don't all have to go fucking play soccer if our kid doesn't want to play soccer. Mm-hmm. And then let the kids who want to play compete. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, then no doubt there'll be something the kid wants to play or do. And there's so many options. These- maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe, right? Like, dude, there's we were at this fitness expo uh, last weekend in Dallas and – um there's this kid DJ, uh, DJ Austin, I think is his name. Uh, yeah, that's his name. He's 12. Wow. And like, yeah, he's shredding. That's cool. And, and, and like having a fucking party. And all I can think about is no way my dad, you know, from 1954 at me at 11's like, I think this is what I'm into pop. Like there's no <laughs> way I get support for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe slap. Meanwhile, <laughs> like I'm super stoked for this kid. And, and yeah, of course. Right. And like this kid, I look at it and I'm like, dude, if you're willing to just do this until you're 25 and like be willing to just try to get better at it and just do it till you're 25, it'll fucking work. No uh, doubt. <laughs> like if you've got 12 years of DJ experience by the time you're 25 and give a shit about making better music and doing this and that, like, yeah. I, I, I will bet on you every day of the fucking year. I guarantee you succeed and kill it. Yep. So yeah, 12 years. you did the grind. Yeah. Mm. 12 years from now, everyone keep an eye out for uh, DJ Austin. <laughs> Dude, I mean, look, that's one of the things I've always loved about strength and why, why it's always mattered to me because it's one of those things you can't fucking fake it. Yep. You can't, you can't outsource the work to someone else. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, some some dipshit can't come in and just buy it. No, no and you talk and about so, you know all of us who have it know it. Fucking, that's where you get the lessons. That's where you get the, the discipline. Everything coming from it is just trialing and failing and repeating until you get mm. something fucking changing. And yeah, next well, minute, there's there's a success. Yeah, you, you know, just like, can't stop. Yeah, I like to say you can't buy strong. You can't buy strong. No, you you can't right like. That's one of those, I think that that's one of those interesting things. I've always had respect for anyone across any genre yeah. that like, man, if you're, if you're training and you're trying to get stronger to improve performance at a thing, mm. we have shit in common. hundred percent, hundred percent. And then that's why I think from, from this community, like everyone just sort of likes to see everyone get better. Even if you are, I guess, competing against someone, you know what time they've put into it because they've done the same as you you want to see them yeah right as well as you do yeah and you know and like luckily for me like i guess i never found powerlifting or strongman or highland games look mma is competitive like you have to you have to deal with a person in front of you and beat an actual human highland games or powerlifting or any of those things like i'm going to put up the best number i can and that's gonna play how it plays like i don't get to affect your thing mm. and so i don't know i mean the com- the competition was always against me yeah i think that's the draw card for those sports because it's like as you said you can't control the other person it's like you know in a game setting of like um you know nfl or rugby over here it's i can't control 
some big Polynesian coming at me trying to take my head off. But in powerlifting, right. strongman, or Highland Games, I can, to a degree, control every, every variable to set myself up for success. The best you can, right? Exactly. That, that's it. The best you can. There's a couple of variables you don't get the pick, like with the Highland Games. I don't know what the implements will look like. Maybe what if the old the stone sucks, or did it rain, or is that we throwing in a bog, or mm. any of those type of things. But other than that, like yeah, like you try to eliminate as many variables as you can. That way, you can make decisions on the fly. Yep, yep. And then come at the end of it, mate. The barbell tells no lies. Oh, that's it. That's it. It's also look. I the also the thing I love about the you know the weight room is kind of the same way I guess I feel about um, <laughs> importance in the universe. Uh, I guess if I believe in a higher power, I'll just call it the universe. Yep. Um, I love that it's indifferent. Yep. It has no desire for me to be successful or fail. It just is. It yeah. is whether I'm successful or not. So I may as well be fucking successful. Yeah. 100%. And the barbell feels the same way. It doesn't fucking care. No. <laughs> never has. No, it's it never doesn't. given a shit about a single person who's ever picked it up. No, it doesn't care <laughs> who you are, what you did that day, you what happened on that weekend. It doesn't give a fuck. It's it's so and, right? and, and it doesn't down. want you to get stronger. It doesn't want you weaker. It just yeah. simply is a thing that that exists that we all have a relationship with yep. a completely emotionless piece of resistance, right? Like that's, that's a weird a thing that we chose that. Side, I think. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right. Like for sure. I've been there man. today. Barbell. <laughs> Gravity wrong. Well, we did have a theory about that. <laughs> we have a very strong theory about that. It involves the moon. How about gravity. Yeah. It involves oh. the moon. Do you want to hear it? Moon's not real anyway, but yes. <laughs> Okay, so what we were hypothesizing is that if the moon can affect the ocean perhaps, through, gravity. through gravity, perhaps where the moon sits, it affects what the barbell weighs that day. Think about it. I mean, but in the same way, wouldn't every, like it, it wouldn't ever be heavier. It could be lighter. It could, it could be marginally lighter, I suppose. Marginally. There we go. There we go. We could yeah, yeah, yeah. Marginally. I, I, I would say it's some measurable amount the same way that, I mean, look, I'm sure that there's, if I Google this, there's probably answers we can find for it. Meanwhile, I mean, all we would have to do is determine, do we weigh slightly less? Yeah, that's. that's when the moon's in a certain position, because yeah. we're 70% water. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So there should be some pull on us in some way other than the go. water that's inside of us is in a vacuum. And then, yep. Yeah. It's not like they're great tides or what like, have you. But. Yeah, it could be low tide or high tide on us. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to wake up pretty high tide, if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, brother, mate, we like to um, hit you with 10 big questions. They are super. Oh, shit. Hard. All right. They're super random and strange. Are you ready for these 10? Let's rip. Okay. What word comes next? Apple, banana, house, ape. Raspberry. Excellent. What motivates you to work hard? I'm dying. Fuck Good answer. yes. Who was your hero? Me in five years. Oh, fuck yes. I love that. Now it's karaoke night. You need to go out with a bang. What song are you finishing with? Head Automatica's Beating Hearts Baby. Oh, yes. Your nickname as a child? Gomez. Gomez. Do you, st do you still get Gomez or no more? <laughs> no, no. It was just dad only when I was a kid. I don't. <laughs> now, this is, this is a big question. How many pillows do you sleep with at nighttime? Three. Three. Ooh, where are you running the third one? So ideally, I've got a good one up top. Yep. And then I've got one I'm like wrapped around here. Oh, cuddle pillow. And then I've got a hip on one. Yeah. Preferably wow. that's one big pillow of oh, like my leg one. over one. Yeah, yeah. And if I'm really fancy, I have the same setup on the other side of me so that when I roll, I don't have to bring my pillow. 
Fuck. It's quite that a luxury. Clever. You're living in 2040. <laughs> yeah. That's it, man. I got this cooling system on my bed, too. You got one of those? Dude, is it as good it's as a fucking seems? game changer. That, I'm telling you, dude, the, the chilly sleep thing, the Uller. Yep. In my bed, I, I can sleep in like sweatpants and a hoodie. Wow. That's like, amazing. You're not supposed to be. We're too big for that. We all know this. We should die all night. <laughs> meanwhile like like i can actually be cold i can set this thing at 50 degrees fahrenheit so yep. whatever crazy number that would be celsius <laughs> um nice. but yeah it's it's wonderful they also have a really cool feature on it that um so you can heat it up too so like my chick has one on her side of the bed that is different temperature than mine yep yep and then so i use it as an alarm clock so i can set it so if i want to get up at like 5 30 at about 5.15, it starts bringing the temperature up. And so it oh, pulls you out of deep sleep pretty naturally. And then you wake up kind of warm. Wow. That's amazing. So, dude, it's full. As far as like, if you're looking for things that are performance enhancing, like, why wouldn't you improve your sleep? It's a third of your fucking life. Yeah. Fuck. I need to get one. Why would you one. let a third of your life not be as cool as possible? Fuck. This is a good point. <laughs> I like it. Now, how long does it take you to get ready in the morning, sir? Depends on the activity. Um, less than 10 minutes. Less than 10. <laughs> Lovely. Who was your first crush as a child? Mary Richard. Oh, nice. Who knows you the best? Bonnie or my ex-wife. Mm-hmm. And probably at this point, Bonnie. Bunny, lovely. You found the you found a bottle on the beach. You rub the bottle, and out pops the genie. The genie grants you three wishes. What are your wishes? Any stipulation here about not being able to ask for more wishes? Type shit like that. No rules. No, no rules at all. No rules. Your genie, your bottle. All right. So, infinite number of wishes. We'll start there. Well played. Uh, next would be. A hundred million dollars or a hundred billion dollars, but like clear, like I don't have to explain it to some fucking government. Just all this, this is in my account and no one is stressed out about it. <laughs> They're just like, he fucking got the genie money. There's no <laughs> some big taxes I have to pay or some bullshit lottery or anything. I have a hundred billion dollars to do what the fuck I wish with. There's no genie tax. You're all oh. good. Perfect. So hundred billion dollars under those stipulations uh, and the ability to teleport. Oh, fucking teleport would be cool. Yeah, that's the first. No more teleport. fucking teleport's airport. the ultimate superpower. Nothing's a fucking better superpower than teleport. Fuck no. That would yeah, be cool. It's tropical. way cooler than a private jet. Yeah, you can go anyway, whenever you want. Yeah, because and instantly. Yeah. So then mm-hmm. I just now bought time. Yeah. Think about how many less steps you would take all day. <laughs> oh yeah. You wouldn't be getting. Think if I could just be anymore. in the kitchen, <laughs> just be like. Burp, burp. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be wasting all my gains. Oh on man, steps. fuck no! Oh, dude, I'd be so fat. <laughs> I'm not sure that I could be responsible. I'm not sure that I could be responsible with teleportation. <laughs> man, it's been an. I mean, it would be some point where I would lay in bed and teleport to the toilet to piss. Like, there's no way I would. I would. That was the first thing I thought of. Like, just yeah. having to get up when I. You could like- be super lazy, and you could teleport sitting down too. So you're just sitting down, going straight away. Don't have to worry about standing up. Yeah. With infinite number of wishes, I don't know how long before I would pull the uh, live forever card. Yeah, fuck. You can pull that whenever you want, or you can go back in time. I wish I was was 20 again. Fuck going back in time. (laughs) Nothing great happened back then. We're just going back to less technology. 20 year old in current time. He was all fucking chubby. I don't know, man. I like (laughs) like the 40 year old me. I'll keep him. (laughs) <laughs> fucking damn near 40 year old me is fun man um i like the physical ability i had back then but i kind of got the gist of everything they can do i could still i could still adventure and shit now i wish my hip didn't hurt i'd probably use a wish on that at some point <laughs> man it uh, been, it's been an absolute honor having you on the show today can't thank you enough um we'll do the normal social media stuff where can people find you where can people buy uh buy the apparel yeah, so um, the hate.com is the website. Uh, hate brand goods on Instagram. I am I hate Matt Vincent. And then um, I have the Umso podcast 
I have a YouTube channel under Matthew Vincent. And um, I think that's it. I think that's all the places that I do stuff. Perfect, man. We'll chuck that all up in our show notes mm. and people add a link it. so people can find you a bit, bit easier. Boys, been a pleasure. That's been rad. It's always, it's always fun chatting with uh, with the Aussies. You guys are always a good, we, a good laugh. When, when the world allows you, we need you here. Dude, well, let's figure something out, man. I would, I know Bonnie and I would both love to come. And if there was a way to, yeah, man, you know, pretend it's business, that would even be cooler. Fuck yeah, done, and man. We'll, we, we we'll can make organize, that work. Organize, throw on some things, and hang out here, and um, yeah, maybe some party. Yeah, the killer. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, it's brother. Be party time, <laughs> <laughs> brother. You have a good day. We'll speak soon. Thanks, bro. Yeah, pleasure, mate.